Hello to chapter 10 of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll. And this chapter is titled The Lobster Quadrille. The mock turtle sighed deeply and drew the back of one flapper across his eyes. He looked at Alice and tried to speak, but for a minute or two, sobs choked his voice. Same as if he had a bone in his throat, said the griffin, and it set to work shaking him and punching him in the back. At last the mock turtle recovered his voice and with tears running down his cheeks, he went on again. You may not have lived much under the sea. I haven't, said Alice. And perhaps you were never even introduced to a lobster. Alice began to say, I once tasted, but checked herself hastily and said, no, never. So you can have no idea what a delightful thing a lobster quadrille is. No, indeed, said Alice. What sort of a dance is it? Why, said the griffin, you first form into a line along the seashore. Two lines, cried the mock turtle. Seals, turtles, salmon, and so on. Then... When you've cleared all the jellyfish out of the way... That generally takes some time, interrupted the griffin. You advance twice. Each with a lobster as a partner, cried the griffin. Of course, the mock turtle said. Advance twice, set to partners. Change lobsters and retire in same order, continued the griffin. Then, you know, the mock turtle went on, you throw the... The lobsters, shouted the griffin with a bound into the air. As far out to sea as you can. Swim after them, screamed the griffin. Turn a somersault in the sea, cried the mock turtle, capering wildly about. Change lobsters again, yelled the griffin at the top of its voice. Back to land again and... That's all the first figure, said the mock turtle, suddenly dropping his voice and the two creatures who had been jumping about like mad things all this time sat down again very sadly and quietly and looked at Alice. It must be a very pretty dance, said Alice timidly. Would you like to see a little of it? said the Mock Turtle. Very much indeed, said Alice. Come, let's try the first figure, said the Mock Turtle to the Griffin. We can do without lobsters, you know. Which shall sing? Ah, you sing, said the griffin. I've forgotten the words. So they began solemnly dancing round and round Alice, every now and then treading on her toes when they passed too close and waving their forepaws to make the time while, to mark the time, while the mock turtle sang this very slowly and sadly. Will you walk a little faster, said a whiting to a snail. There's a pauper's close behind us, and he's treading on my tail. See how eagerly the lobsters and the turtles all advance. They are waiting on the shingle. Will you come and join the dance? Will you, won't you, will you, won't you, will you join the dance? Will you, won't you, will you, won't you, won't you join the dance? I'm sorry, this is supposed to be sad. I, I, I'll try my best, right? But I'm, I'm making this up while I go along, so 
please, please be, be patient with me. You can really have no notion how delightful it will be when they take us up and throw us with the lobsters out to sea. But the snail replied too far, too far, and gave a look askance, said he thanked the whiting kindly, but he would not join the dance, would not, could not, would not, could not, would not join the dance, would not, could not, would not, could not, could not join the dance. What matters it how far we go, his scaly friend replied. There is another shore you know upon the other side. The further off from England, the nearer is to France. Then turn not pale, beloved snail, but come and join the dance. Will you, won't you, will you, won't you, will you join the dance? Will you, won't you, will you, won't you, won't you join the dance? Thank you. It's a very interesting dance to watch, said Alice, feeling very glad that it was over at last. And I do so like that curious song about the whiting. Oh, as to the whiting, said the Mock Turtle, they... have you seen them? Of course. Yes, said Alice. I've often seen them at din. She checked herself hastily. I don't know where Din may be, said the Mock Turtle, but if you've seen them so often, of course, you know what they're like. I believe so, Alice replied thoughtfully. They have their tails in their mouths, and they're all over crumbs. You're wrong about the crumbs, said the Mock Turtle. Crumbs would all wash off in the sea, but they have their tails in their mouths, and the reason is... Here the Mock Turtle yawned and shut his eyes. Oh, tell her about the reason and all that, he said to the Gryphon. The reason is, said the Gryphon, that they would go with the lobsters to the dance, so they got thrown out to sea, so they had to fall a long way, so they got their tails fast in their mouths, so they couldn't get them out again, that's all. Thank you, said Alice. It's very interesting. I never knew so much about a whiting before. I can tell you more than that if you like, said the Gryphon. Do you know why it's called a whiting? I never thought about it, said Alice. Why? It does the boots and shoes, the Gryphon replied very solemnly. Alice was thoroughly puzzled. Does the boots and shoes, she repeated in a wondering tone. Why, what are your shoes done with it, said the Gryphon. I mean, what makes them so shiny? Alice looked down at them and considered a little before she gave her answer. They're done with blacking, I believe. Boots and shoes under the sea, the Gryphon went on in a deep voice. Oh, in a deep voice. Boots and shoes under the sea, the Gryphon went on in a deep voice, are done with whiting. Now you know. And what are they made of? Alice asked in a tone of great curiosity. Souls and eels, of course, the Gryphon replied rather impatiently. Any shrimp could have told you that. If I'd been the whiting, said Alice, whose thoughts were still running on the song. Okay, sorry. If I'd been the whiting, said Alice, whose thoughts were still running on, us on the song, I'd have said to the porpoise, 
Keep back, please. We don't want you with us. They were obliged to have him with them, the Mock Turtle said. No fish, no wise fish, would have gone anywhere without a porpoise. Wouldn't it really? said Alice in a tone of great surprise. Of course not, said the Mock Turtle. Why, if a fish came to me and told me he was going a journey, I should say, with what purpose? Don't you mean purpose? said Alice. I mean what I say, the Mock Turtle replied in an offended tone, and the Gryphon added, Come, let's hear some of your adventures. I could tell you my adventures, beginning from this morning, said Alice a little timidly, but it's no use going back to yesterday, because I was a different person then. Explain that all, said the Mock Turtle. No, no, the adventures first, said the Gryphon in an impatient tone. Explanations take such a dreadful time. So I think that's that's enough for today. Um, uh, yeah, I, I apologize for my for my singing. <laughs> bye bye. Till next time with the second part of this chapter. Bye bye.